guys, welcome back to Furby's Kitchen. My name's Shane Furby, it's great to have you back in my kitchen. We got a wonderful, wonderful meal in store for today. I'm very, very excited about homemade catfish po'boys. But the little twist that we're gonna be doing is that we caught these catfish fresh from South Cove, Arizona with my buddy Devin. Check out our link up here and you're gonna see how exactly the techniques we use, the type of gear and the bait that we were using. Really excited for this. I got a couple things that I prepped out just to get started before we bread our catfish and start cooking. Um, I have my saucepan back here with about, just about a half inch of canola oil. I have that preheated to about like 350 degrees. And then I also have my oven preheated as well, right around 350. 75 degrees, okay? We're gonna be using that a little bit later. It's gonna speed up our process. So just get started with our catfish. We're gonna be seasoning everything liberally. I made my own Cajun style seasoning. This has a little bit of onion and garlic powder, paprika, cayenne pepper, a little bit of oregano as well. Um, we also just have a little bit of salt and pepper. We wanna make sure everything's seasoned proper before we start cooking. So just get started with our catfish. I'm just gonna go over with a little bit of kosher salt, very, very lightly. On the first half, black pepper. And I'm all about the Cajun seasoning, man. Got a little bit of spice. Shout out to my buddy, Emerald Gasse. <laughs> Beautiful. So this first round, I'm gonna make sure that we do season pretty liberally on the fish because I do want a really, really nice spice. When it comes to our breading station, all-purpose flour. I have two eggs that I've cracked and, and whipped with just a little bit of water as an egg wash, and then our panko breadcrumbs to finish. I'm gonna go ahead and season these up, and then we're gonna go flour, egg, panko. I'm gonna show you how we fry these up. Um, I'm doing a very traditional breading with the panko breadcrumbs, all-purpose flour seasoned, as well as two eggs whipped with a little bit of water as an egg wash, and our panko breadcrumbs also gonna be seasoned as well with a little bit of that Cajun and kosher salt. So I guess I wanna make sure that everything's seasoned appropriately. I'm gonna season my flour with a little bit of kosher salt, and then back to my panko. Crush your salt. There's a couple nice pinches. You don't have to measure everything out. A little bit of black pepper as well. Beautiful. And then a little bit of that Cajun seasoning. Same exact seasoning that we just put on the fish. Going right into our dry ingredients. Beautiful. Set this down here. I just take a little fork, make sure it's nice and mixed together. Little technique when it comes to breading your fish is to keep one hand dry and one hand wet. So that way you don't have a little mess on your hands afterwards, okay? I'm gonna flip my fish with my, with my wet hand and we're gonna season the other side. Devin, nice grab on the catfish, buddy. He beat me, by the way. Two catfish or three catfish to one. We got this covered. All right, so I got my fish all nice and seasoned up. We're gonna go ahead and bread this up, and then we're gonna go right into the frying pan. They do. So traditionally in New Orleans, when you're breading catfish, they, they like to use a little bit more of a cornmeal. I'm using panko, it's gonna give it a little bit more of a crispy texture. Um, I, I like the cornmeal as well too. I've had soft shell crab po'boys, catfish po'boys, shrimp po'boys, you name it man. Creole cooking is very, very good. And honestly, it's very simple as well too. A lot of flavor. All right, let's start frying these catfish. I have my canola oil, which I have, like I said, it's about, I'd say it's about a cup and a half to two cups. I like to use a higher lip pan so that way the oil doesn't splatter as much. All right, let's get to frying this catfish. Before I drop all my fish in, we wanna make sure that our oil is the right temperature. Like I said, I don't have a thermometer here. We're gonna be doing a shallow fry instead of a deep fry. Um, I'm just gonna take the end of one of the catfish fillets and I'm just gonna touch it. Do you see that nice and bubbling? That means our oil is hot and ready to go. Make sure you don't splash, okay? Now I'm gonna keep a close eye on this catfish. Like I said, we're looking for a nice golden brown, probably right around like three minutes per side. I have this on a low heat as of right now on my bigger burner. So just make sure that the oil doesn't get too cold. All right, so we got our catfish frying up in the back. I'm gonna get our fresh baguette. We're gonna cut this up, get it toasted with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, and then we're gonna whip up a quick little sauce and assemble the whole dish. Beautiful. Always season a little bit. Just a little bit of kosher salt. And just a little bit of that fresh ground black pepper. So we got our baguette, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. Gonna get this toasted up in the oven. We're gonna whip up, whip up a nice little sauce to finish this dish. Follow me. All right guys, this is one of my favorite little sauces to put on any type of fish. Very similar to a tartar sauce, it's a remoulade sauce. I'm gonna be starting off with a quarter cup of mayonnaise, just regular mayonnaise. I have some whole ground or stone ground mustard. Guys, for our relish that we're gonna be adding, I, I use honey bourbon pickles. Has a little bit of sweetness, also has a little bit of chili that was marinated in these pickles as well. About two tablespoons. And then I just have a little bit of fresh lemon and we're gonna salt and pepper 
just to finish. Our stone ground mustard, honey bourbon pickles. I'm gonna use the juice of a half of a lemon, okay? Just gonna catch a little bit of extra excess seeds are gonna fall off. Also, we're gonna finish off with just a little bit more of our Cajun seasoning that we used earlier. A little bit of black pepper. A little bit of kosher salt. Make sure all the ingredients are very, very well distributed. Mix all the way in. Guys, we're gonna get to the last step here and assemble the whole entire dish. Have some really nice fresh vegetables that we got out of Devo's garden. A little bit of romaine lettuce, a little bit of red oak that he grew in the backyard, very tender. And I'm gonna add a little bit of shaved radish as well. A nice little radish in the garden we picked. And I'm gonna do a little bit of shaved red onion. All right, so everything's all finished. I'm gonna show you how we assemble the sandwich and then we're gonna sit down and enjoy. I love this sauce. Feel free to get liberal with it. Make sure everything is coated. A couple of those little shaved radishes I'm gonna put on there. So a little bit of the, the lettuce from Devo's garden. I just have some heirloom tomatoes, shaved radishes, and I put a little teeny bit of our shaved red onion to finish on the base. I'm gonna grab one of our catfish fillets. All right, guys, and there you have it. There's our first catfish po' boy. Like I said, we caught this fresh in Arizona South Cove. I like to garnish a little bit of fresh lemon on the side and give a little squirt right on top there. All right, so our sandwich is all finished up. I can't personally wait to sit down and sink my teeth in this. It smells amazing, and I know it's gonna taste even better. Once again, my name's Shane Furbay. Thanks for stopping in at Furby's Kitchen. Thanks for checking out my fried catfish po' boy video, and feel free to sub uh, subscribe. Check out all our other videos on Cook Gardener Life. Thanks a lot, we'll see you next time.